Can we talk about the various phases of giving notes? Like what would be the first step? Mm -hmm. Well, notes, first of all, are, uh, you know, not just what you're getting from producers uh, or getting from potential investors or, you know, directors. Uh, when we say notes, when Hollywood says notes, it's anybody giving you some point on something you've written that would make it better, that would go to make it better. So a writing group gives you notes. Your writing partner gives you notes. Your, uh, anybody you've handed your script to will give you notes. That's the word that Hollywood uses. And it's kind of funny, you know, it's like a, a joke in the industry when anybody will say anything and then someone will say, I have notes, you know? In other words, you know, I, I could tweak that and make it just better, whatever it is, right? Yeah. So um, mentors, producers, mm -hmm. um, finance people sometimes give notes. Directors. And the thing that changes then is there, there we have there's kinds of notes and then there's the, the you know who's giving the notes and how much attention you have to give to them. So so uh, you know the kinds of notes uh, say we have something we call line notes. Then you have broad story notes. You have character notes. You have you know all, all things that have to do with the content. Uh, and you know there might be that you get some notes on you as the the writer. You know you're not going there. You're not doing your research and things like that. But but you know the 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 idea of knowing in every context. Okay, what kind of notes am I going to be getting? What should I be expecting here? Um, so that you go into a note session and say, uh, this is what I'm looking for and this is what they should be providing me. And again, in terms of setting yourself up for failure, one of the things that happens is that there's not that joint expectation. So the producer has one thing that they're thinking to talk about and the writer's going in you know, with their little notebook open to get another thing and the yeah. two things never they're, meet. They're, they're trying to get notes that maybe a mentor would give as opposed to a producer. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, that can be a problem sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so with the phases of the notes. Um, yeah. yeah, so uh, in almost every note session, it's really important to start with the positive and start with what's working about the project because everything needs to be couched in that. And so many note sessions are focused on the negative or on what's not working that sometimes when, you have, when, when a script is 90% working and you're focusing on that 10 that's not, it's easy to lose perspective um, as a writer. So it's really important if you're, if you're giving notes that you're really focusing on, okay, these are the 100 things that work and then now we're gonna focus on the 10 things that don't. Mm -hmm. um, and then also in every note session, I think it's extremely important to say right up front what the purpose of the notes are. Mm -hmm. So whether you're talking about story and character, whether you're at a place where it's appropriate to talk about story and character, or whether you're talking about little nitty gritty polished notes or typos, those are very different conversations and are appropriate at different stages of development. And the writer has to control this a little bit because a lot of times the producers come into these things and you know especially if they're busy you know producers or you know I'm saying producers or you know somebody they 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 just start whipping things off you know and it's like you know what you have a typo on page 10 and oh that that character just I hate that character I never cared about that character and you know I don't know yeah. if this should be a comedy or a thriller or and you have a shooting script and they're like well maybe it should be a comedy instead of a drama you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. but you know but that idea of throwing at the writer like line notes you know like there's a misspelling here I didn't think that joke was funny and oh yeah that character doesn't work okay this is a note session that's out of control so basically the writer should come in and say okay this first right you know what I'm looking for here in this um, in this meeting is notes about the story so so I know that there's typos or I know that stuff like that there shouldn't be typos but you know I, I know that there's other little stuff but let's just talk about um, this story and here's Here's the arc of the first story, a story. What did you think about that story? Did you, did you, and, and to kind of really keep the note giver on task, uh, giving you the feedback that you need. Mm -hmm. And when we, when we mentor writers, we typically start with very broad story notes. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about characters, what they want and what they need and what they're, uh, how they're going to grow and change, um, what their thrust 
is going to be in the story. Um, and then we talk about plot um, and, and how that's moving th things along. And we pretty much stay there, and theme a little bit, but we pretty much stay there when we're in the beginning stages of story. We don't go into dialogue and we don't go into format, things like that, because those are, are distractions to the, the meat and potatoes of, of the story when you're at, a, at, at the beginning stages of, of developing a project. Now, if you're two, three drafts in, it's assumed that at that point you have your story, you have your characters, and you might still have one or two notes about what some, uh, a character does in particular, in a particular spot, which may not be in line with, with um, you know, the rest of the story. There might be something very specific there. Um, but that's when you give the notes that are, um, you know, very, you know, nitpicky details and when you're really getting into just the, 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 the little things. Mm -hmm. um, if you're giving really big, broad story and character notes on a third, fourth draft, um, there, there's a big, that means that there's a really big problem with the, with the skeleton, with the core of that script. And it probably needs to be um, completely gutted and, and retooled. Yeah. Uh, we find that um, if, you, if you take care of the big issues, it's amazing how many of the little issues resolve themselves. And yet most writers are so resistant sometimes to addressing the big issues because the big issue sometimes is this plot just doesn't work. You know, it just doesn't work. And that one is a note no writer wants to hear because it means yeah. completely complete, rebreaking the story. Know, yeah, and, reconceived. Yeah. And so they do want to focus on, well, did you like the little subplot that takes place in the sardine factory? You know, yeah. And it's like, you know, we don't care about that right now. We're telling you that this character's overall movement from you know, A to, to B is not convincing and compelling. And that's what we need to go back to. And they have to keep pulling the writer you know, back to that. But uh, again, uh, the writer needs to be uh, managing this notes process in a lot of ways. You know, and everybody they meet with, they need to, to know what they're looking for. And here's a red flag on notes, by the way, too. If, if someone who's giving you notes tries to tell you how to solve the problems in your story, chances are uh, you should, you should uh, nod, be nice, and, and get Throw out. out the because yeah. the truth is the people giving notes have read your script once, maybe twice. Uh, they're not invested in, they don't know what you've rejected, they don't know what you've tried. All they can do is tell you what isn't working for them, and that's the feedback the writer needs. As soon as the note giver starts to say, here's what you need to do, chances are they're defaulting, that, that note giver is defaulting to something they've seen in a movie before, or they've seen in a story before, and they're trying to plug in a fix that they, you know, like kind of some all-purpose fix. You know, you need you need ten girls in a bikini and a car to drive through. Yeah. You know, to kind can of pick up. Can we get an explosion in here? Yeah. Can yeah, we? Yeah. What was it? We, we had one pace. executive yeah. give a note once to a friend. Can't we get a decapitation in before the midpoint just to pick it up? You know. Yeah, but yeah. Um, but that that idea of trying to plug in a fix, you know, or anybody trying to do your job, and it's like that's not the note giver's job. The note giver's job is to say this is how. This affected me. This is what I got out of this, not this is how you should fix it. And the writer really has to resist someone else solving their problem, trying to do their job. Let's say a writer is moving up the food chain with a project and they know that they're going to have five minutes and this person may go right for the jugular and they've got to compose themselves and they don't want to lose this whole project. What are some tips on keeping calm and, and really keeping your defenses back? Because maybe whoever's going to deliver these notes is a, is a power player and they're not going to be kind. What are some tips yeah. on that? Well, I mean, what, what's implied there is that it's a high stakes situation. And, and now if this is somebody who can literally green light your movie, you should definitely take their note with, uh, <laughs> you know. Oh. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. Now, but if they're not, if it's just somebody giving their, their two cents but they're a higher up, um, if, if it's if if it's a false sense of of power, then you know they they've got to take that note just like they would with anybody else. I think the, the you know the best thing is to just tell yourself going in, this isn't me. Like this is my table. This is this is a table. There's my script on the table, and I'm over here. And what we're doing is talking about that thing. We're not talking about me. As much as you can separate yourself emotionally from your work, and, and you know the best way to do that, write 10 scripts, write seven or eight scripts, yeah. right? Because the, the more you do the it. The more you do, the more it's just another project. Yeah. And you know, yeah. but if you've got this one and this is your life and it's your passion, then, yeah. then you're so invested in it. But you know, there's nothing like being five or six scripts past that one to, to make you go back and say, yeah, I can lose that 
that thing I was so attached to, you know. But um, I think that one of the signs of um, a writer that's difficult is that they are way too attached to the project. It's way too much about them. Which goes back to it's too personal and they it's need too distance, personal. right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. You're not a professional.